did it. I quit. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Devamsha and I have, for the last year or so, been making videos about working at the big four as a junior auditor. And I am happy to announce that it is now my previous title. I want to give an honest recount of my experience as an audit junior, someone on the audit grad scheme at the big four. I really wanna emphasize that everything I'm saying in this video is my own opinion and is not representative of the firm I worked at. It's all based on my own experience there for three years, three busy seasons, and hopefully lots of lessons for you guys. And it's gonna be an account of my expectations going in versus the reality I was faced with coming out. So there are a few positives in here, obviously, but I'm gonna give you the honest negatives as well. So here are a couple of reasons you might not want to join audit. You don't want a lucrative, stress-worthy qualification at the end of it. Now with most audit schemes, and actually pretty much all of them, I don't know any external audit schemes where you're not sponsored to do the Chartered Accountancy qualification, uh, in the UK at least. With most schemes, you do get the Chartered Accountancy qualification at the end of it. Whether that's the ACA or the CA, they're worldwide recognized accountancy qualifications. They lead to highly lucrative careers if you decide not to stay in external audit. We'll get to that later. They open you up to a lot more jobs. It is a post-grad qualification. It's something that's really, really good to have on your CV. It makes you highly employable, but it is, you know, it's a lot of stress to study for. With my particular job and my particular grad scheme at my firm, I got plenty of time off to study for these. I say plenty of time, but you know, in the realm of having to get through a lot of material for one exam. We did get chunks of study leave off. We were told that, you know, we were not to be bothered by managers at work, employees, colleagues at work while we were on the study leave. So even getting the qualification for me was streamlined as much as possible. We were supported as much as possible. And it's something that I now have to my name forever if I pay the annual fees. <laughs> Another reason not to join audit is if you want a work-life balance. Now, this one's gonna be a little bit controversial because big four firms do push for, you know, the work-life balance marketing, branding, the perfect picture of it, but it does depend on managers you have, partners you have, certain jobs, even the clients you have. But generally in audit, I did not really have a well-balanced account or experience of life and work. <laughs> throughout the year this is. So this is outside of busy season from January to March where work-life balance isn't gonna be a thing at the bare minimum. So even outside of that, you know, work-life balance did not really exist, I would say at least half the time. Um, whether that was my own fault or not, the fact that it didn't exist, the fact that there were pressures to, you know, work past contractual end of day and sometimes you were doing work that you know couldn't feasibly be done in a day or a week that expectation was there and still even within the realm of busy season having three months of your year being put aside for you know insane client deadlines or long days is a lot of your life if you add up you know like the months of a career in audit so the fact that you know it wasn't an arguable point and you could get work-life balance in another job was a down point for me and potentially might be for other people. Another reason not to join audit is if you don't want a family-like working environment. Now the really really good thing about my three years in audit and the firm I worked at to be honest was people I worked with, the people I joined with, you know, the people in the junior year groups, so the majority of your teams most of the time. That was a huge, amazing part of my job is, you know, the friends that you make and, you know, the laughs that you can have. I know it's cringy, but it's true. And with the way I worked, I turned a lot of my environments into a family-like environment where, you know, there weren't any walls up and there was lots of laughing. That was the way I liked to work the professional relationships that I had with my colleagues at work were really, really great. And a lot of them are going to be friends for life. Another reason not to join audit is if you do not like financial details in Excel. Hopefully you would know this when you're going in because audit is all about the minuscule detail, especially the first three years, you will be going into a lot of detail work when you are auditing the financial statements of your clients. Like if you're more interested in more big picture work and high level work, that is something that comes towards, you know, 
the manager, senior manager side of the career. So when you progress at least five years and that can be a long time to wait to do something that you actually went in to do. So it can be quite technical as well. So if you do like that, you know, it's perfect. And there's ways, ways to even specialize that knowledge, become really good or like the go-to person for a certain aspect of the audit. You do have to go through that initial detail-oriented grunt work. Another reason you might not want to go into audit is if you don't want a lot of money in your life. Now, obviously, no one's gonna go into a job where there isn't a good, you know, prospect of earning a lot of money, especially one where you end up with a CA on your CV after three years. But external audit within the big four and also within like the industry comparison of accounting and advisory columns, like sectors underneath like the financial industry umbrella. External audit is the one of the lower paid roles or industries within that. And also you can do this and verify this on places like Glassdoor and just having a look at what other industries are paid. But external audit is generally paid at least 20% less than most other accounting and advisory counterparts. So knowing that also compounded with the fact that within each promotion, you're only getting five to 10% of a bump. Whereas with other professions, you're maybe getting 10 to 15 to 20% of a bump every time you're getting promoted. Given that, if and or when you do decide to leave audit, you do end up having a really good skill set that ends up giving you quite a lucrative career outside, so either in industry or in a different department. So unfortunately, it is just external audit, which seems to be the lower paid. And in the same vein, another reason you might not want to join audit is if you don't want fast promotions as compared to other industries or service lines. So if I take consulting as an example for this at my firm with consulting, you tend to get promoted every two years instead of one. And this is a very broad application of the like performance review cycle because depending on you know how good you are at your job and maybe even resourcing issues, promotions may or may not come. And promotions in audit are generally a lot easier to get than promotions in other service lines just because it's quite bureaucratic with the structure. And this also applies to if you're about to leave the job. You can leave the job and get a promotion at the same time. So if you were to jump to industry, you could get a manager position if you left as an assistant manager with enough experience. Another reason not to join audit is if you don't like dealing with clients. There is a lot of client relationship work and stakeholder management work within the audit role as well as all the detailed work I mentioned earlier. So if you like working by yourself and not speaking to the client ever, this is not going to be a role for you. Client interaction does increase the more you work up the ladder and the you know the more you get promoted and you do tend to be viewed as a better you know like team player and candidate for promotion if you are really smashing that you know client relationship building skill set that they're looking for another reason not to join audit is if you like to go on winter holidays between january and march <laughs> and i'm being serious i mentioned earlier january to march is almost written off on your calendar every year because of busy season. And if this is something you're happy with and you enjoy the work and you enjoy you know, the teams, this isn't gonna affect you because that's part of your life. But for me, having three whole months of my calendar blocked out was a little bit a little bit upsetting. And, and I'm not saying that you, you can't travel at all. You just need to go through quite a rigorous approval process. You have to have holidays requested quite far in advance. And that was just something that I didn't like. Another reason not to join audit is if you don't like structure and a specific way of working. This is a difficult one to explain, but I'm gonna try. So with audit, there is a very kind of prescriptive way of working because the whole point of, you know, audit is you are upholding, you know, public trust in these companies, you're contributing audit quality and improving it throughout the firm. So naturally there's not gonna be, you know, as many opportunities to change a process or a way of doing something unless you are working on a specific team that was doing that. You know, if you were working on an actual maybe center of excellence or delivery team where you're trying to improve the ways that auditors are documenting their work or you're on a team that evaluates, you know, practice review feedback, all this kind of stuff is a different kind of area of working and usually is something you can get into after you've qualified, after you've done your three years in the grad scheme. For more creative people, for people who like to question things outside of 
the way you're evaluating client information because, you know, critical thinking is a huge part of the job. You are supposed to question the way things work, why you're doing certain tests, why the client does something a certain way, why business results are a certain level. You are supposed to question all that. You are supposed to be inquisitive. You are supposed to be professionally skeptical, but in changing the processes and ways of working internally, there's not much you can do there. And there's also the aspect of, you know, you're legally required to do some things a certain way. You're legally required to, and it's that upholding public trust thing that limits a lot of, you know, work you can do. I mean, if you're a creative accountant, you're working illegally. Do you get what I'm trying to say here? These were a couple of like reasons that you might not want to join audit. Some positive, some, you know, not so positive. And you have to remember there are always going to be cons to every single job out there. It just takes a little bit of reflection and evaluation to think about, you know, like what sacrifices are you prepared to take? And they shouldn't have to be huge sacrifices. You know, things like work-life balance are going to vary between firm to firm. And I say this all the time, it's gonna vary between firm, it's gonna vary between clients, it's gonna vary between teams, managers, everything. So my experience of work-life balance was unfortunately not something that I was expecting, as well as everything I've listed in this video. So. I hope this helped you evaluate whether you want to pursue a career in audit. And if you have any more questions, drop them down below and I will see you next week.